By the end of this video, you're gonna know six tips that I wish I knew earlier when I started pickleball. And be sure to stay tuned to the end because I'm gonna share a shot that everyone wishes they could hit better. Let's get into it. One thing I wish I knew earlier was how to hit an effective lob. Now, lob is a powerful tool, but when you hit it at the right time, it's even that much more powerful. What I mean by this is when your opponent is moving forward, this is when we want to hit the lob. So we catch them when their weight is shifted forward because it's tougher for them to move back if their weight is on their front foot. So now you hit that lob, it doesn't have to be perfect. You got more margin for error and you get them moving back. Now you've got them scrambling, you're on top of the net and you're ready to put the ball away with that next shot. This video is sponsored by Carbon, but more on that later. All right, something else that I wish I knew earlier when I started playing pickleball was not to take the paddle back on my backswing so far. So too often, and I see this at a lot of different levels where they're hitting this third shot drop and they're taking it back, back to here, so pretty far back. And this brings margin for error in your backswing. So what we wanna be thinking about is just getting the paddle out nice in front here and then you're pushing through. Because what happens is, if you start here, you have to accelerate to hit the ball over. But when you take it back here, too often I see people take it back and they get the momentum the swing going, but they slow it down at point of contact. So they're actually swinging fast and then they slow, they're decelerating. We want that ball, or sorry, we want that paddle to be accelerating through and that's how we get the ball to dip into that kitchen line. This next thing I wish I knew earlier was on the third shot drop. Now, oftentimes we see this mistake, and I would do this for a while, where you serve and then the ball is returned back to you. And what happens is you've maybe taken a step in, and so you're hitting that third shot as you're falling back. And so I call this hitting off your back foot. Now, we, we don't wanna be doing that because what happens is when we're hitting while we're moving back, we're losing momentum, and oftentimes we miss that ball in the net. So what you wanna do instead, you wanna hit your serve, return comes back. You wanna be back here, ready to be moving forward. So as you're hitting that third shot drop, now you're transitioning towards the net versus falling away, and chances are you're gonna have a better chance of getting that ball over the net. Now let's talk dinking. So the secret to a killer dink is all in the wrist. So too often and early on, I realized we use our wrist too much. We get too wristy with our shots and it leads to popping the ball up. Uh, you have no control when you're hitting these dinks. Now what I want you to think about when you're hitting your dink is to lock that wrist. Here's a backhand dink. I go here, I'm locking that, and all I'm doing is pushing through. I'm not going like this to where I'm chopping at it. It's not wristy, but the wrist is locked. Same thing on that forehand dink. So if we're coming over here, I'm hitting that with it locked out here, and I'm just guiding it towards my target. And I wanna think, be almost in slow motion. We don't wanna be, <clears throat> we don't wanna be poppy with this dink. A lot of times, early on when people are playing, they think, how do I, how do I get this by popping it up? you really wanna just guide it over. One, one thing I show is just doing this, put the ball on your paddle and you're just lifting it over. Put the ball on your paddle and you're just lifting it barely over. So remember, lock those wrists and then just guide and lift the ball over. Sometimes in the heat of an intense point, we get carried away and we tend to hit too many balls that we should let fly out. This is a common thing that I wish I knew earlier where we gotta judge where the ball's at to decide to let more balls go out. So many shots are actually flying out, but again, we get carried away and we hit those balls. So a general rule, and I love this saying, shoulder high, let it fly. But, but there's other times too where it might even be lower uh, than your shoulder and it's still going out. I'll give you an example. If they're moving forward, balls at the middle of the court, and you see them swinging, it's, come, it's gonna be coming up. So that ball is most likely going out. So be looking for different ways Practice this, practice letting more balls go out because you really have to get an idea of when these balls are going out so you don't waste your energy on those shots. So we're to our final tip, the fun one, how to hit an Ernie more effectively. So a lot of people that are playing, 
they, they want to know how to hit an Ernie. So I wish I knew this tip earlier where if I'm getting in a battle and this is really how you set up an Ernie, if you're getting in a dink battle, what you want to do is you want to push your opponent off into that corner. So, so you're exposing them back there and particularly when it's their backhand. So this happens a lot of times over on that side of the court. But you'll see here, I'll do this in a point against Elisha where I'm exposing his backhand. I'm pushing him off. When I recognize that he's turned and he's looking down, that's when I make my move to jump over and hit that Ernie. We're loving our carbon paddles. Elisha and I are both using the carbon 3X. Specifically, I'm using the 14 millimeter. Really like the power it provides, good control. So if you do want one or anything carbon related, We've got a link in the description for 10% off anything there.